So the Russian band uh, Pussy Riot, uh, which was jailed and went through the whole crazy Russian court and prison system, is doing an immersive theater project, um, which to me is so, is really cool. Because one of the things that uh, I've talked about uh, is obviously numerous times is Chris Hedges' book, Death of the Liberal Class. And one of the things Hedges brings up is in the 20s and 30s, theater, which was like the main art form back then, was really challenging those in power. It was about working class people. It was about defending the poor and everything like that. And uh, Hedges said there's nothing wrong with frivolous art. There's nothing wrong with a bubblegum music. There's nothing wrong with a superhero movie. I love those popcorn movies. But when that's all that's out there, then it gets in the way of real art. And I think as an artist and I think other artists out there need to be talking more, needing to be more political and needing to challenge power. And what I've noticed in America that really bums me out just within even the comedy community here in LA is I'm just seeing a lot of comics just be apathetic. They might do some Trump jokes or whatever, but they're not really talking about the corrupt system. They're not talking about the DNC leaks, their Podesta emails, Julian Assange or anything like that. They're just like, oh, Trump's an asshole. Yeah, Trump is an asshole and that's fine, but that's not, that's not it. As I've said numerous times on this show and no, uh, many other people have said this, Trump is a symptom. He didn't just appear out of nowhere. And we need real art. We need art to challenge things. We need art to wake people up. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Fa fantastic movie, loved it, had a blast. But I think Dunkirk is a little more relevant. Um, not, you should see both movies. But to me, Dunkirk um, shows how awful war is, how scary it is, how the World War II soldier is not just, you know, they're always depicted as the World War II soldiers like charging up the hill and fighting the Nazis. And you just see the bunch of young guys who are scared. They're surrounded by the Germans. They just want to get the hell out of there. Um, so I want to go into this theater project because they have a Kickstarter page and I'll put the link below. I'll put the link to the article. It's in truthdig.com and a link to the Kickstarter as well because here's what they're doing. They, um, they basically were sentenced to prison for uh, a now infamous protest against the Orthodox Church in 2012. They are working with the award-winning London-based theater company Les Enfants Terribles. That's French. I can't speak it. Sorry for butchering that word. My apologies to anybody who's from France listening. <laughs> uh, band member Nadia Toloknikova is staging an immersive theater project based on the members' own experiences in Russian courts and eventually prison. This art project is part of Pussy Riot's bigger campaign for a prison reform. Uh, Tokanakova tells Truth Dig, it's easy to forget that people just like us are living in horrible conditions in prisons. Many of them were sent to jails because of minor offenses. Some of them ended up in prison because they were, say were saying truth to power. And in America, some of them are just sent there because the private prison industry needs money, so we create criminals with arresting people for a plant. Um, the experimental theater project Inside Pussy Riot is set to open in London in November. This isn't the first time the band members have used art to send a message about Russia's justice system. She said in 2014, once she and her fellow bandmate Maria uh, Okonaya were released from prison, they began Zona Prava, Zone of Justice, an advocacy group aimed at providing legal assistance to Russian prisoners. They also began an alternative media outlet, Media Zona, which works in collaboration with the advocacy group. And last year, according to Rolling Stone, joined Peter. Uh, they joined Peter Gabriel, Johnny Depp. Ugh, I don't know about Depp. Hit his girlfriend. He's a dick. Tom Morello and other musicians for the Voice Project's In Prison for Art campaign, which raises awareness and funds to support free expression. Um, so what they're going to do, it sounds like they're going to allow the audience to become a participant, experiencing exactly what Pussy Wyatt ran through from the original church performance to the court to the prison cells. We're going to recreate Russian courtrooms, a real Russian labor colony, solitary confinement cells, this is fantastic and why this is fantastic is immersive art is really cool. I've seen some cool museum exhibits. If you ever get to Memphis, Tennessee, go to the Civil Rights Museum. The front of the museum is the Lorraine Hotel. That's the balcony where Malcolm, uh, excuse me, where Martin Luther King was killed on. 
Um, so if you've ever seen that classic photo of everybody pointing up and him laying on the ground, you come up, walk up to that, it's, it's pretty stirring, it's pretty emotional. One of the things they do in there is there's a bus from the South in the 60s. And anywhere you sit in the front of the bus, a light comes on and a speaker says, you're not allowed to sit there, boy, and you gotta move and sit on the back of the bus. Doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, just any of the seats, they tell you to move. It shows you the size of the prison cell that Martin Luther King was in. It goes through the whole history of it. So this sounds very powerful because I think, you know, we're only told what the news tells us. Like Standing Rock or see some protests. Wow, those protesters caused problems. Those cops had to do it. What if you were there just peacefully protesting, holding up a sign saying, we want, you know, water is life, drinking water. And then you got shot with rubber bullets. Everyone I know that was at Standing Rock came back changed. Joined politics, joined organizations. We're just like, this is insane because they saw it firsthand and then saw the media not reporting it. So it is up to us as artists to talk about this stuff. And when I see my fellow comedians just trying to, you know, I don't, I don't befall, you know, judge or any comic. You're in LA. You're trying to get on TV. That's good money. I, look, I am too. I just auditioned for some TV shows. I'd love to get them, but that's not all I'm going to do. And they're afraid to, they're going to lose their gig and they don't want to, you know, you can be a little controversial, but not too controversial. When I tell people I got fired for my Twitter feed, they go, oh boy, I better clean mine up. And I'm like, I'm not cleaning mine up. I got two movies coming out. One is Earbuds, the podcasting documentary, September 12th. You can pre-order it on iTunes. And we show it. It's a very positive movie. It shows the connection between podcasters and fans. But we cover some serious subjects. My other movie that's coming out in October is Afghanistan. It's about me going in a war zone and what that's like. And you see me freak out and get scared and get mad and not like it. And, um, I, I, you know... I'm not saying my little movies are changing the world, but you got to say something. You got to have some point of view because honestly, the apathy in this country is, is, just, is awful. People are confronted with this and I'm seeing it and they're just like, oh, it's too much. I don't want to do anything. And I say to some people like, hey, you know, you want to get involved in this thing? I, you know, my friend's doing this volunteer work. You want to get involved? No, nah, I don't know if I want to do that. And it's just like, I just want to go out and drink and get high and play video games. And it's like, None of those things are bad in small moderation. You want to have a couple of drinks, you want to smoke a little weed, you want to play video games. There's nothing wrong with any of that. There's nothing wrong with any of that. Everybody needs a distraction. I mean, I surf with Putin. You know, like if all I did was go surfing and not do this show and didn't want to pay attention to the news and didn't want to get involved, then I'm checking out. That's a form of you, I'm going to the gym, working out. I, that's a form of checking out. You need a balance in your life and you can't check out and apathy is driving me crazy. So I'm so glad that um, these women are doing this and, um, and what they're trying to do is use art and use specifically live theater to get people to open up and understand what's happening in the world. Because I think we don't get it. We live in our nice little worlds and we have our little like, a house and a TV and a thing. We got a bike and a go out. and We don't see it. We don't know what jail is. We don't know what real oppression is because we haven't lived it. And when you start to see it and experience it, it starts to change people's minds and we need to start speaking truth to power. So hats off to Pussy Riot for doing this. I hope I can get to London <laughs> this fall to see it. The links are below. Speaking of supporting artists, go to the patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. That link is also below. If you're listening on iTunes, go to that website. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month and you've already helped it grow. We're over 4,500 subscribers and I'm already, I've got eight episodes of the podcast, which is because of you guys. If you guys didn't support the show on Patreon, there would be no Political Vigilante podcast. So you guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. And remember, make Gotham great again.